Good evening and welcome to PACET uh, CIS 205. Tonight we will be discussing CompTIA's A plus exam 220-802 and exam objectives tonight are 1.5. Those exam objectives are the control panel utilities. We will be covering control panel utilities that are common to all versions, some that are unique to XD, some that are unique to Vista, and some that are only unique to, win to Windows 7. Uh, these are not all of the control panel utilities, but these are the ones that are called out in the exam objectives, so they are the ones that we will be covering tonight. So let's start with ones that are common to all versions of Windows. And the first, that, first one that we'll talk about is Internet options. Uh, from once you click on that applet, you open up open up the applet, and you get several tabs. There's general, security, privacy, connections, and program. The general tab will let you set the home page and other general browser behavior. Uh, under the security tab, you can set security zones. You can restrict also restrict browser behavior. Uh, under the Privacy tab, you do get some granular control over your online privacy. Uh, the Connection tabs allows you access to preset VPN or dial-up connections, and there's also access to a connection wizard if you need it. Under the Programs tab, the one that's most important is setting the de default browser. You can also establish which HTML editor you will use there. This is also another spot where you can manage add-ons for your browser. Uh, the main thing that you need to know under the display settings, or just the display applet, is that's where you can adjust your display properties. Under user accounts, guess what? That's where you can add or modify existing user accounts. Now, add new ones. There we go. Um, also common to all versions is the folders option. You open this one up, and again, you have several tabs. Under folder options, you, there's the general view tabs. These are the ones that are most important. Uh, under the general, that's where you get to set the general behavior of folders. Uh, the view tab is interesting. It, it allows you to modify what is seen when a folder is opened. And that includes such things as view hidden files. Now, this unhides or hides, if you uncheck it, system files so that they can be reviewed or modified. You can also check the hide extensions, which hides or unhides known file type extensions. This allows you to see what program is opening up with, or actually, which folder is opening up with which program. Under the systems uh, applet, uh, there is a performance button. This is an extension of Task Manager, uh, the performance tab in Task Manager. But it gives you a more detailed view of systems, of the system's performance, and you can run reports from there. The remote, remote settings tab, that allows you to set options for remote access. And the System Protection tab allows you to uh, set the restore point or set when restore points will be created. Also common to all versions is Window Firewall. We've discussed this in several different sessions, but hey, there we go again. Uh, Windows Firewall helps to protect against all forms of malware. You also have a power option. And once you click on that, uh, you can establish how the PC behaves when it hibernates. Uh, and that's the behavior that a PC will exhibit when it's been idle for a specific amount of time. And hibernation actually saves more power than sleep mode. And that's because it actually turns off things like the hard drive and shuts things down. Uh, it does save everything to the hard drive so nothing is lost. Saves quite a bit of power, actually. Uh, you can adjust the power plans. 
And these are the, the usage profiles for a given power scenario. Usually um, you can just leave those alone unless you're working on a laptop, in which case you might want to adjust some of those plans. You can also adjust the sleep, suspend, or standby. Uh, this is different than uh, hibernate. Uh, it sets some PC behavior for when uh, how it behaves after it's been idle for a specified amount of time. It does allow for faster recovery than hibernate. Instead of putting everything onto the hard drive and shutting things down, what it does is it pushes it all into RAM and then just kind of goes to sleep. It shuts down everything that keeps power to the RAM so nothing is lost. So now let's move on to features or outlets that are unique to XP. Here's kind of a screenshot of the XP control panel. And the first thing we'll talk about is the Add, Remove, Programs button or folder. This is actually the best utility that's built in for removing programs from an XP PC. It can also add or remove operating system features. There's some network connections um, applet there, and that's used to modify the, the network interface connections in network connections. We have a printer and faxes applet. That's what that does. That's used to manually add or modify printers and their drivers. Then there's the automatic updates button. And that's where you can adjust when the PC will download updates. You can set it to do it automatically or only or manually. There we go. Uh, then there's also a network setup wizard there. Those are all the applets that are unique to XP that you need to be worried about. So now let's move on to those that are unique to Vista. Okay, so this is a little bit different. Vista was uh, Microsoft's attempt to do kind of a one for all. And you can tell from some of these applets that that Microsoft has been in the tablet or touch business for quite a while because the first applet we're going to talk about is tablet PC settings. Uh, so this is for touch enabled devices. And one of the things that you can do here is you can set the handwriting recognition so that it can recognize your handwriting. The next one we'll talk about is pen and input devices. This is used to set stylus and or other input device behavior for touch-enabled devices. Then there's offline files. Uh, this enables a hosted file to be kept locally offline. Also establishes the synchronization behavior once that node comes back online. What this is, is all about is, let's say, you're at your workplace, you have a server, you have a file server, you download a file because you want to take it and work on it at home. Uh, it then flags it as having been taken. Uh, your laptop or whatever you downloaded it to files it as being an offline file. You go home, you work on it, you modify it, and then you go back to the office and you go back onto the network. Well, it's an offline file, it's been flagged, it now knows that it needs to be synchronized and then it does so. This way, it keeps everything current, keeps confusion down, so on and so forth, but it does allow you to work on files offline. Then there's the problems, problem reports and solutions applet. Uh, this checks for solutions to known PC problems. It's also where you go if you want to send reports to the problems that your PC has had. Uh, then there's the printers button. That's the same function as the printers and faxes utilities in XP. Those are the ones, all the applets that you need to be concerned about with this stuff. So now let's move on to Windows 7. Windows 7. Okay. Here are the applets that you need to be concerned about with Windows 7. The first one is Home Group. Now, this is a simpler method of creating a small office, home office network. The only problem is, is you need a computer that's running home groups to be able to do it. 
and that means currently that's Windows 7 or Windows 8. Uh, XP and Vista cannot join a home group, so then you're going to have to go back and create the, the Soho network manually. Then there's the Action Center applet. This monitors key security settings. It also includes additional alerts that the user or administrator may want to investigate. Uh, things like backups not occurring correctly, uh, problems that didn't crash the machine, but you should still look at those alerts. Then we have the remote application and desktop connection applet. This is a quick link to remote application applications or desktops that have been previously configured. Um, you can configure them from here, but for the most part, it's ones that have already been configured that you get access to, to from there. Then there's the troubleshooting applet, which, guess what, gives you access to other applets that can be used to troubleshoot PC problems. And there we go. We have talked about uh, applets. We talked about applets that are common to all. All versions of Windows. Uh, we have talked about applets that are unique to XP. We have talked about applets that are unique to Vista, and we have talked about applets that are unique to Windows 7. And that covers CompTIA's exam 220-802, Objective 1.5. Thank you very much, and have a good evening.